Are you developing IoT solutions? Get ready for tomorrow with Farnell, supporting your design journey from connecting smart sensors to the cloud to implementing AI. Find everything you need at Farnell.com. Enjoy this episode with Farnell, a global distributor of electronic products and solutions. Hello and welcome to the AV Forums Movies podcast for Monday, the 8th of August, 2022. Tonight, I'm joined by Mark Costello. Evening all. And Tom Davies. That's me. Well, tonight, we're going to talk about Bullet Train at the cinema. We're going to talk about what we thought about the latest Predator movie, Prey. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of discs, Event Horizon on 4K and Heat on 4K, both out today. And we're going to discuss some upcoming 4K releases and what Tom thought about Sandman on Netflix. But first, let's do some competitions, Mark. Oh, uh, yes, I'd better get ready, hadn't I? Uh, Okay, yes. Hello. Uh, So you can currently win the outfit on Blu-ray, Event Horizon in limited edition 4K Steelbook, Raw and Walkabout on Second Sight Blu-ray, Arrow's amazing flatliners on 4K, Second Sight's Very good, The Witch on 4K, and Criterion's August titles on Blu-ray, as well as July's titles as well, in brackets for some strange reason. You can also win Green Lantern on Blu-ray, Sonic 2 on 4K, Red Sonja on 4K, and The Northman on 4K+. And I'm reading it and quoting directly, loads more. Yeah, I just added a bunch Uh, (laughs) onto the list. They all look good. So head over to uh, avforums.com forward slash competitions to enter. All competitions are open to eligible AV Forums members resident in the UK. All right. Thank you, Mark. We've got some uh, previous winners. Uh, We finally got patron Big Ben Chunk, his replacement cat's eyes on 4K. Hooray! He had a. He got the Blu-ray. We got. He sent the Blu-ray back, which is very kind. So we can run another comp for that. But uh, they sent him the actual 4K disc, which was nice. Uh, Stella H won High Crime on Blu-ray. Patron Mike Mag won The Lost City on Blu-ray. Pop T won Martyrs Lane on Old Fashioned DVD. Do they still make those? They do. Oof. And Patron Macy won the massive fat Doctor Who and the Daleks limited edition 4K box set. Nice. I was reaching for it to show it, but it's already in the post. Uh, and Vilco won the podcast exclusive Resident Evil Infinite Darkness on Blu-ray. Well, well done all. Uh, right, let's dip straight into movies. And we're gonna, not going to talk about Top Gun Maverick anymore. We're going to talk about the next big thing after that and Thor, which was Brad Pitt's bullet train that out of all of us only Mark has seen. Mm. Yes. yes. And and uh, was good. Uh, uh, yes, it, it was. It was fun. F-U-N fun. That's about it really. Uh, <laughs> sh- sh- shallow as a puddle. Uh, some of the humour, as probably very evident from the trailer, was a bit ropey but a lot of it was actually quite amusing was nowhere near as action-packed as you'd maybe have expected from both the premise and the trailer and the director and the director it 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 went for almost a crazy i think i wrote in the review on on the site that it resembled clue uh in so much as all these assassins end up on the train, but then you have to piece together why they're there, what they're after, and what all their relationships are with each other. So it's almost like a crazy relationship mystery type thing with lots of crunchy gnarly action bits thrown in. I think, think you mentioned Smoke and Aces as well. I was getting Smoke and Aces. Y- yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it, it instantly brought to mind those mid 2000s sort of actioners uh, wanted smoking aces shoot them up snakes on a plane is i am pretty much sure massively referenced because there is a snake on a train (laughs) uh and and yeah i mean unlike most big action fests these days it doesn't crap the bed going into the final act and it saves its big really ott action stuff for its finale and it, and it's ludicrous and it's and it's it's overblown and it's completely pompous but it's really good fun it, it it just is never as consistently fun all the way through from start to finish. It wants to be as cool as a QT shaped cucumber. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson is all the way through. He steals the film with ease. 
Uh, he does the world's best Ringo Starr impression doing Thomas the Tank Engine, which was most unexpected, but very welcome. And and yeah, there's 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 not a lot to say. I think uh, I give it a seven out of ten. Fun, never quite as it doesn't quite fulfill on all of its promises, but it's just a rollicking good sort of just under two hours at the cinema. I'm hearing it's fun. <laughs> did I, did, I'm not sure if I got the fun bit across. It's fun. I mean, I'm reading that. I'm okay waiting for this on this. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would, yes, I'm, I'm not, I'm not cinema this, but, um, but it sounds a lot better than I thought it was going to be, mm. uh, which is not as good as I wanted it to be. So, yeah. It, I, I, it, yeah. Go on, Tom. I was just going to say it, it looked like it, it looked, um, what's the phrase I want to use? It looked pretty try hard. Um, in in mm. a similar sort of way to, do you remember like the the late nineties, early two thousands wave of Quentin Tarantino alikes mm. that we and and the trailer kind of reminded me of that era, not mm. necessarily of a a Tarantino flick, but of that like, oh, we're we're trying to create something that is popular by p- putting things we know people like together, but really what without really yeah. understanding what what it is that makes those things good so bizarrely most of the toe curling humor is actually in the trailer the the (laughs) the 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 painful bits where brad pitt and aaron taylor johnson stop a fight so that a a waitress can bring a drinks trolley through and you're just thinking oh just stop just stop you know there's there's another bit where you know his pit goes can you just go way 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 and you just think how many times do you need to say way we got it, you know, and and most of the cringe humor is actually in the trailer. Uh, but yeah, it's I, 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 it takes place on a train. Therefore, it is a single confined, cramped location. It's it it, it doesn't scream Top Gun Maverick style. Must see at the cinema. Yeah. Uh, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be some nice, bright, shiny colors for all that HDR goodness for the discs at home. And yeah, I think it's. Uh, Probably worth a, a very safe stream slash disc purchase or rental when it when it eventually reaches physical or home media. It's a, a nice um, topic starter, though. Like, what's what's the best movie set entirely on a train? There's um, Strangers on a Train. Snowpiercer. Yeah, I was good. You, you know, you Strangers on a Train is good one. Snowpiercer is a good one. You obviously got your various iterations Na- of narrow Orient margin. Express. Ooh, Runaway Train. Yeah, Death Train, Horror with, um, Express, <laughs> Pierce Brosnan, mm-hmm. Horror Express, with yeah. uh, Peter Cushing, I think Vincent Price, uh, and I've Cassidy. seen that. That's the one with the the early man. Yes, yeah, he, yes. That's, it, it's that's a great movie. It's business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, write in the comments what you think. Uh, what you think the uh, the best movie set on a train was? Just for fun, just you know, to waste a bit of time. Mm. Buddy thirty five, sorry, three hundred and five. Love on the chat wants to know how the audio was for Bullet Train in the cinema. Mm. Uh, it was. Oh, well, I have to admit, I it, it didn't exactly blow my frock up. To quote Mister Selly of this parish, uh, it was perfectly pleasant, perfectly fine. I saw it on a fairly small screen. I'll be honest, down at my local the light cinema. Uh, Sandy, good, but again, the 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 confines of the train means it's you know the, the, it, there's not an awful lot of room for massive, expansive, huge amounts of bass heavy effects. Uh, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that that ends up uh, on the home media version. But sound sounding good without being utterly exceptional. Fair. That's a cop out and a half, isn't it? <laughs> It'll do. So you gave this a seven, but I you, did. But you gave the new Predator movie Prey mm. a six. Yes. What a dummy! It's not as much. It's not as much fun. <laughs> what a dummy! <laughs> I mean, Come so, on, so man. I, I, uh, I watched, um, I watched Prey, and I was actually dreading it when it spun up because I thought I love the first movie. And, you know, if no one's listening, which unfortunately they are at this precise time, I would say I really love the second movie. Mm. It, and, I, and I feel like I shouldn't. I feel like it's a, one of those 
real guilty pleasures, but I probably watched the second movie almost as much times as the first one and would would default to putting it on because in my mind, I feel like I haven't watched it as much or I'm as familiar with it as the first one. It's also got the benefit of being immensely funny when it's not entertaining. Whereas the first one is, it is a bit funny, but it's mostly a serious kind of action sci-fi thriller, macho everything. But the second one is frequently unintentionally funny. There are bits in it. You can't help but laugh at Danny Glover and his birds problem. You know, you can't help but laugh at the things in it that they want to take so seriously is Danny Glover and his trousers problem. You know, a lot of it is is Danny Glover's problem, but I mean, it's, it's very, it's very entertaining. Bill Paxton and his sweaty suit. Bill Paxton, I mean. Never known anyone who sweats through into a suit jacket. That's, that's proper sweat. It is. He should give the rock some lessons, but yes, I mean, it's a, it's a, a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure I've ever thought of any of the other attempts, AVP, even Predators, as being in the same realm as those first two movies for me. Oh, no, not even not even close. And and yeah, when when the trailer for Prey hit, yeah, it was like a bolt from the blue. It's like, oh, yeah, a Predator movie. Yeah, it (laughs) was really. It was like they haven't done this in a minute. (laughs) (laughs) And then watching it, I felt the same thing. It's like, oh, yeah. It, yeah, they've it made a predator done. movie it can be done can yes. you imagine it was it was the strangest thing watching you know the predator stalk his way through and feel, get his feel for the environment watching them develop these uh protagonists who you just couldn't figure how they could face off against a, a predator and seeing it all put together i mean it was it owes a lot to the first movie for sure, but in a way that I think I think really worked, and um, and I had a really good ride. And just when I thought it was over, which was about I think about forty five minutes in, and I thought, right, this is the solo finale that it was building towards. It had a whole kind of middle act, which had one of my favourite sequences in the whole movie with the predator doing his thing uh, with a whole bunch of. Uh, people which he could do it to <laughs> and um it was very nicely shot very nicely choreographed and it was something that i don't think i'd seen before from any of the predator movies let alone the two that i hold in great esteem um this doesn't have the humor and it doesn't have the macho of the first one but it's a different era and i think that i have a lot of time for what it's done for the franchise which for me is shown they can do a Predator movie. And if they want to, they don't have to do any more um, in this era at all. They can do another era. I mean, we talked on the, I think on the chat, they talked about one with Samurai. You know, they could, they could easily do that. They could do one wherever they wanted to do it. And this movie has shown that you don't have to run out of ideas in Predator movies or turn to like Shane Black to do one about autism. I mean, but, it's it's yeah. it's just it's just a good back to basics predator movie, and I, I'm and I'm really chuffed that the future is open again. I think um, I think if I was gonna if I was gonna make any like criticisms of it, um, th- they would definitely be that it, you're right that it was shot really nicely, and it was shot n- nicely enough to hide mostly how kind of uh, without denigrating it too much how how cheap it looked i think yes i, I think I, I, yeah uh it was definitely shot sort of within its means um well, they blew so much money on the last one yeah they were never you know they had reshoots on the last one yeah. it was an incoherent mess they had to reshoot the ending which as we've discussed on bullet train is often the most expensive part of a movie I can, can't imagine them wanting to throw much money at this. Yeah. When people talk about how they should have released it with them all speaking Comanche rather than <laughs> just a dub of Comanche, it was never going to happen. It, it was it, literally it, never going to happen. It was entertaining it's, to see people posit that, that, that there might be a I, world where that would have happened. That would happen, yeah. I, don't, I mean... <laughs> Maybe 20 years ago with Mel Gibson directing, but you know, things things have changed. 
you know. Man, put put a predator in apocalypto. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <with> that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy it's back, and I think that we we should gang up against Mark and make him rewatch it in the dubbed Comanche version. It was great fun. It was yeah. it was just a good predator movie, and that is the first time that you can say that in decades. It is decades, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was well on board with it. Well on board. Well, you know what, Mark? Tell us instead <laughs> about your nine out of ten event horizon, because you reviewed it on four K, and I was so proud that you gave it a nine. I was, I was proud enough that I wanted to tell my kids about it, and they wouldn't have understood, and then I'd have had to show them it, and then I'd be in a world of pain with you know all kinds of social services so it was it was a, a, a proud moment when I, I saw that you gave that a nine out of ten it, oh well, event please, event horizon well I, I really wanted to review the damn thing and uh, and I was away on holiday and you, you you did better justice than I ever could have um it, it's been a firm favorite of mine for forever Probably not wholly unlike Predators 2, because it, it is a nonsense movie, frequently nonsense movie. But and they say stuff, you know, Lawrence Fishburne really goes to town on saying lines that don't make any sense with such passion and enthusiasm. <laughs> he's got a chair. It, the first time we meet him, he's on the deck of the bridge, at, or, or early in the film, he's on the deck of the bridge. He's got a chair that starts at the back, turns sideways, moves a bit forward, moves a bit to the right, and then moves forward again. And then he's there and it's kind of rocking back and forth. And you're like, it, they couldn't have just had had him just wheels. There. Put, you know, put, put, put wheels on a chair. But it's not even like a straight line it goes in. It's like it's the weirdest thing that they designed for him. And he's rocking in it like a little rocking chair. Um, the, the design of the ship, the ideas behind it, I mean, pretty much every character and everything everyone says, even the translation, which suddenly goes from meaning one thing to, oh, I've just found another entire bit of dialogue <laughs> that makes it mean the opposite. I mean, it's a, it's a fabulously insane, nonsensical movie that I love. Mm. I love this movie. And, and really, why did you love it? It was probably the first time in a long while you filled your shorts at a film. <laughs> it I was. I don't know whether I was desperately scared, but I did. It did, mm. it did definitely have an edge to it. I agree. Yes. You, it you turn was. the lights off, and it's got an edge. And it's very clever little thing. Sam Neil in the in the tunnel trying to fix the lights, and the lights start flickering and going out. Boom! It's 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 definitely got some shining vibes to it mm. that... it's super entertaining as well that it's um uh, it's, i i think i'm right in thinking that it it came out a year after hellraiser in space um bloodlines so uh, it, yes. it's like here's hellraiser in space and then paul anson goes no 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 here's hellraiser in space <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is that's what it is good job <laughs> Yeah, but it, it I mean, it was, it is, it is nothing more than a haunted house in space. Let's be it's honest. So well it's, done. It's yeah. alien. It's oh god, it's galaxy of terror. It's every one of those alien ripoffs that you've all seen, and, and it's completely unashamed by it. But it is that amazing design. I, I, you know, again, I said it in the review. It is the best designed spaceship since the Cygnus in the black hole, mm. which shared a very similar gothic cathedral-esque nonsensical impractical <laughs> vibe and and it, it, it is you know all you had to see were those doors opening that look like a torture device oh yeah that yeah. That, that spiky ball we with, need more with, spikes with all those spikes around it <laughs> yeah that, that just stopped and shone lights at it and yeah. their hairs on the back of your neck yeah, around, and you don't yeah. even know why you don't even know why because it's the juxtaposition of the insane gothic mm. design in space i think someone mentioned in the thread today the the very subtle cleverness of positing hell as another dimension i don't yeah. know if that's subtle cleverness is it i i i'm, I'm sorry you know it, it it posits that hell is real it is real it is just another one of those dimensions 
and you know, it's I, I think it's little subtle touches that sell the bizarre, uh, you know, almost like the, the 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 realness of it all. It sounds really strange. Liberate me, you know, but <laughs> but it, it's just it just it just all combined. Uh, and and my one gripe about it, my one gripe is at the end, and I won't, I won't go into Which, spoilers. Is it the helmet scene where they do no. the targeting? No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it's exactly that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it's the fact where it launches one of the crew into space, completely untethered, and he's, <laughs> he's half a galaxy away, and yet suddenly he decides he's just going to have a little squirt of oxygen, and he flies yeah. <laughs> right back to the event. And he's ta- talking to himself the whole time. All the way. <laughs> I know. I mean, I mean, you know, stuff, stuff like that is ludicrous, but Anderson sells the crap out of it. You know, he does, the, yeah. the fact that he kicked it off with an with Orbital on the soundtrack, he finished with The mm. Prodigy. Well, yeah. what's, what's that? gonna do with anything but it's you know i think it was the absolute just sheer balls out nature of it that made, made it work and it is still scary and it still looks amazing so easy nine out of ten i've got i mean i've got the set oh no i don't have the set you've got the set oh, i've got your set amazon tell me it won't be here till saturday i'm like oh. I, I thought it meant last saturday this oh. is i'm gonna go and cry a bit but yeah what are you gonna exactly. stick your patch to mark uh well where, where are you gonna wear the badge <laughs> yes it's it it is one of paramount's well to be fair to paramount at least they've got some tat in this collector's edition yeah unlike yes. some of their others co- other collectors it's editions. like a reeling from beverly hills cop it's, it's not, not, not real life stuff tat. in it yeah. it's not just a picture oh, on a oh, nice bit of paper the, the poster yeah. is a schematic of the event horizon yeah That's right. I, I know i've i've got it I, oh, I've nice. Nice. <laughs> i hate you both i hate you both I'm, I'm not sure about those little tiny art cards that look like they came out of an old school pack of sweet cigarettes <laughs> uh, i'm not sure about them but uh yeah all, all, all around top show paramount i am um, i'm looking forward to to delving back into it it's, it's waiting to be watched on my shelf at the moment he's, so he's he's gonna, gonna, you're gonna hate it. it you're gonna hate it you're gonna go oh, no four, no four i think i think no, i love event horizon yeah. <laughs> i think it, tom likes it i do like it i don't yeah. i don't know if i would ever give it nine out of <laughs> i i find it to be super enjoyable and Joy, really joy. pulpy and nonsensical and stupid so like pray then um, I mean, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. A bit, bit more, bit more visually inventive than Prey, maybe. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, good stuff. Good stuff. Big fans of Event Horizon on the podcast, and, and I think we're big fans of Heat. Are we big mm. fans of Heat? Well, or... not this, not this Heat, but no, you know, no, Heat. I'm heat not saying general. Heat. Yeah, Heat the movie, the 1995. I think it's Michael, terrible. Michael it's like Man. it's like Michael Mann's worst movie. It, it's yeah. no LA takedown. I'll give it that. You know. <laughs> no, it's awful. No, it's Inferior awful. remake yeah. ahoy. It's uh yeah, it's no righteous kill. Um <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean uh, it's gotta be it's in my top personal top five. It's incredible. I've always it, loved it. Yeah, uh, it, it is what it's it is maybe the best cop movie ever made. Mm, it's like that one that defines the genre. It's uh, it's very. I mean, it's, he did a fantastic job, and the performances. I mean, I can't think of a, a movie that's taken two stars that big, and given them both so much to chew, that that they're kind of fully rounded entities in themselves. I mean, I I absolutely absolutely loved it. Um, but, and you guys haven't seen this yet. I didn't get on so well with the 4K release. Ooh. It sounds like you're not the only one as well. I mean, the so man, I mean, as a preface to this, man, Michael Mann, the director, he, he doesn't leave things alone. He's done two cuts of Ali. He's done, I think, three cuts of Last Temptation of Christ. He's done four cuts of Manhunter. He's done two cuts of Heat. He does new sound mixes, new color grades, um he likes to tinker the guy likes to tinker and i've it's a real it's a real um the real problem for me because i i like to you know defer to the director's intent 
but when the director's intent seems to change on a whim, I really struggle. Like he did a director's uh, definitive edition of Heat, and he removed one of my favourite lines out of the out of the movie, and the theatrical cut is yet to yet to surface. And I think that's the main problem with this with the tinkering, though, isn't it? It's it's tinkering with it and removing trace of the original. It's like yeah. once once a movie is made and put out into the world, you just have to accept that the movie that movie is out in the world, whether yes. it's exactly what you wanted yes. or not. And it's like that that's always been um, well, one of David Lynch's um, reasons for never going back to June, even though he hates it so much, is because it is what it is. Like it it's yeah. there. It, and or I if think you, if you want to tinker, yeah, release both versions. Mm. I mean. We're That's on 4K thing. now. Yeah. It's not there like is the old space. days. Yeah, boy, you, boy. You, you can do it. it was, and, and man doesn't do a new movie. He just removes a line or changes the sound here and then just changes this slightly. He could easily do, do both versions, but he tinkers and then he won't give you access. And then he tinkers with the sound, which was an issue uh, on a previous release. And then he tinkers with the colour grading. Now, he tinkered with the colour grading in 2017 for the Blu-ray, the director's definitive version. He made it very cool and steely blue. And it, it was a 4K remaster, which is essentially what we have here. It's the same, same master. But uh, the HDR layer appears to have caused some problems. And it, I mean your measure of whether or not you find it enjoyable is, is, is possibly a little bit subjective, but it, it is objectively dark. And Difficult I, to enjoy a thing that you can't see. Yeah, and also if you know the movie, you know that the opening robbery scene was set in the day. It wasn't set at dusk. It wasn't set at... Uh, just at, at sunset. It wasn't set in the half gloaming. And so if you're not familiar with the movie, you'll watch it and you'll go, well, you know, it was. But if you're familiar with the movie, you're like, where's my daylight gone? I mean, LA just doesn't have any daylight in it all of a sudden. Hasn't, hasn't man admitted that he's changed the colour scheme to better resemble as if he, was, if he had shot it today? rather than oh. back in 95. I'm sure I've read that somewhere. I mean, that's... And that's... That, that to me is, you know, tinker, tinker away to your art's content, take a line out, stick a line in, you know, w w whatever. Like you say, give, give us the choice. But he's done a Friedkin with the French Connection here, hasn't he? Has. He has. That's, that's, exactly what, that's what it, it sounds yeah. like. And I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't even seen the 17 version. I'm no, still, he I, has. He has done a... And, done and a we Friedkin. all know how that ended for Friedkin. He ended up going back and admitting he dropped a right old bollock because he never got Owen Roisman on board. And he came out and said, what have you done to my film? Yeah. And they yeah. backtracked and Fox released a fixed remastered version yeah. that took the blue out. So, you know, it's... I I... Reading about this is is interesting because, like you say, a lot of people complaining it, it's it's unwatchable to the point of I'm I'm watching something you know as if I'm wearing sunglasses in, in in the middle of the night. Some people are also saying it looks perfectly fine on their kit. So you know there's a, there's a lot of subjectivity flying around here, it, or or so it seems. But it's the internet. That's what the internet was and made. For. A lot of yeah. a lot of comments which are like, you can turn HDR off. Yes, hundred percent, you can do that. You can fiddle with these settings. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of settings you can change. But it's like you that that yeah. is that is not what you are supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's that you shouldn't be changing your settings for every separate movie that you watch. Yes. Like it, they totally. they should be grading it so that the general public, not on you know super high quality professional editing monitors, can watch it on mm. and enjoy it. Like it looks, it looks good to you in your booth, but maybe on, you know. I, yeah. I can't imagine he watched it through though. I can't honestly imagine he sat there and watched the whole thing. I think he just got a feel for how he wanted it to look and went with it earlier on and didn't realize. I mean, I, I, I sat there and I couldn't make out um, Kilmer's Corvette 
it's a it's a black Corvette. It's at night, but you just see lights mm. pop up. You don't even. It's just a blob of a car there. Um, th- there's scenes where there's a scene where um, where Robert De Niro loses someone, and he disappears into like the the reeds blowing in the wind. You can't see anything there. He's just looking at like black. Um, it's not. I saw it three times at the cinema. These are these are things that I remember from seeing at the cinema. I mean, it's not the way that I've watched this movie before. And I think a lot of people are saying, well, you know, it's what the director wanted, and you know, it looks cool, dark. Uh, I think it's I think it's just too dark. It's it's too mm. much. I mean, he's losing something doing it this way, and all of the daytime scenes. I mean. He shows them, you walk up in the, the demolitions place and it's bright, baking, sunshine, desert. There's no, there's, it's just a dull sky. I mean, it doesn't make any sense that it should be that way. Rob De Niro walks through the emergency room and it's like everyone's operating in low lighting. Why would you do that? Why would you be in the police station working cases with the lights dimmed? It's 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 illogical to me that it would be like this, even if he had a certain style he was going for, even if he'd shot the movie in 22 rather than in 95. I still don't think he would have made these decisions because my brain is telling me these environments would not look like that ever. So 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 on Friday, Disney threw a perfectly good Predator sequel straight out to Disney+. Plus. They've now released Heat with basically the, the five years ago's lazy HDR grade slapped on the disc with no Dolby Vision or anything else. The cynical amongst us, Kaz, would, <laughs> would, would point out to Disney trying their hardest to almost kill off the, both the theatrical and the disc-based home entertainment market and force everyone to go down, I don't know, some form of closed streaming service route. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know I where that came from. I don't think Disney care, but oddly, I think that if Disney were behind this rather than the, it was a director-approved HDR grade, mm. then I think Disney would have just done it normal. <laughs> they, you know, so so I, I, I think they're lazy for not giving us uh, Dolby Vision, but who knows? Maybe that wasn't something that man wanted, you know, and I'm pretty sure he was never interested in Atmos. There are a lot of directors who are against that kind of tinkering. They could have given us possibly a better release than well, this director's intended approved release. So how's the audio on it, Kaz? Because obviously he's it's it's in, same track. infamously great soundtrack. I mean, it is. Yes, it's a great soundtrack, but it's the same track. And so it is a great soundtrack. I mean, it's the, the one same, we've all got, though, already. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they, they upped it from Dolby True HD to DTS on the last, the 2017 mm-hmm. version. Um, I don't, I don't, that, I don't think that's an up in. That's just a, a different flavor of yes. lossless, isn't it? So it was. It was. It's a good track. It's a great yeah. track. It's a demo track. Fantastic track. There's no atmos, yeah. and the, the bitch is screwed. Other than that, pick it up. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was. I mean, it's. It is. It's phenomenal. Ten out of ten movie for me, and I, I was really disappointed. And I did turn HD force turn HDR off, and it did make it fractionally better. But, and the detail is phenomenal on this disc. I'm pained to say I'm more than likely to watch it on Blu-ray again in the future rather than crack out this 4K uh, to, to the point where I was going to gonna watch it with the wife and I said, we're not watching it like this. Oh, we'll just, yeah. we'll, let's, let's not sit through three hours of heat in Merck. I, I, I'm intrigued because obviously I, I watch in a projector in an absolute bat cave. I wonder if that will help. Yeah, somewhat. yeah for sure. Definitely you should try because mm. there are clearly some variations where people get along well with it. But, you know, the OLED should really knock it out of the park. Mm. They shouldn't, I shouldn't need to force turn off HDR to get it halfway watchable. Oh, very true. And it's, so. it's just getting more and more. I don't want to blow it out of proportion. It's not like concerning. It's not like, a, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it is getting more prevalent that, that this sort of stuff 
is happening on big name releases where you think yes. like this is somebody at something everybody wants yes. and is looking forward to and has been looking forward to you know people who are fans of the movie have wanted this for a long time and it comes out and it's just kind of off and this is by no means the first time this has happened no and it's no. not just disney doing it it's it seems to be a weird pattern of regrading stuff for the sake of regrading it i mean perhaps that's the point though perhaps that's the trouble it, i'm saying trouble in inverted commas but the trouble with the limitless features of the 4k format it's enabled people to do stuff that they weren't able to do before, which is fantastic and which makes some movies look amazing, but which has the often has the knock on effect of making movies not like they looked before, which in turn can make movies that you're really familiar with look just odd. You know, it's, it's all good and well making Drive look, you know, super neon. Uh, which kind of suits the proceedings, but um, but it, it, all these things that you can tinker with these days, they're supposed to be enhancements. Some people would just like it the way it was, cleaned uh, up and released in four. So, well, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because you know the, the the technical specs of Blu-ray, you know, always were compromised in terms of things like color space and things like that. You know, the whole point of four K is that it removes those technical limitations that we've had and yet the minute a release comes out that now looks different to that technically compromised version we've had for a decade we're moaning it doesn't look like the technically compromised version now bring back vhs now obviously you know I mean, I'm, I'm, be, I'm being a little bit <laughs> glib there no having, i know i know what you're saying you're right you are right you know, though, you're saying. You, you know yes. so it, it it's difficult because suddenly everyone is is holding as the pantheon you know that 10 year old blue blu-ray is exactly how it should have looked well but no I, one I'm, knows i'm saying it doesn't look how it looked in the cinema and and that's probably pretty obvious because they didn't have the facilities to show it like this mm. in the cinema and, so, and, and and again and all it needs is some smart ass to say well michael mann didn't want it emblazoned on your local cinema screen the, with, with the thing five is, thousand right. lumens coming out kind but of it, thing it belies, it belies the this sort of perpetuated myth that director's intent mm. overrides all Mm. It just yes. it just doesn't once Agreed. once a film is out in the world to be consumed by the people who are yeah. watching it or you know enjoying it critiquing it whatever it it then takes on a life of its own and exactly the way that people <clears throat> enjoy a film is is the way that they enjoy the film mm. it's not it it doesn't necessarily matter that okay you know the the director wanted it a bit bluer or you know he wanted the sound mix a bit mumblier like which yeah. director wants that michael mann yeah. apparently but <laughs> <laughs> it just it, it it's just another another I, I won't say a nail in the coffin for director's intent because there's a lot to be said for it and it, it does matter they should, to a they've got to draw extent. a line they've got to but draw you, a line you yeah. have to draw a line and it's you know you, I'm sure you'd find many people saying like, thank God Star Wars is out of the hands of George Lucas for precisely that reason. You know, mm. his, his intent actively damages the thing that he made. And it sounds mm. similar mm. or along similar lines with, with Michael Mann and his, I think, I think a professional calibrator working on this would have done a, a better job independent of man at, at making it look impressive but authentic i think but it, that but it, I, it, it, yeah i mean you're right it's just it is another uh, a shame that it's another release that appears to yeah. have technical problems which this format was supposed to eradicate it was supposed mm. to be the pinnacle it was, of yeah, quality yeah. and all it seems to be doing is throwing up error after error after granted the world has moved on and we're still, you know, we're still living in, in, in the age of a pandemic. Supply chains are not what they used to be. There's a whole host of other global problems that, that might be affecting things like QC on, you know, our very nerdist and niche hobby. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, you know, you only have to pick almost any 
thread you like in any form of a big release and something. someone yeah. will say i'm not going to pre-order because i'm not going to take a risk that it's going to have a recall well, that, new, that's where exactly, we've gone to yeah that's exactly is. what happened here with me and heat because yeah i i i desperately want it yeah. to be good you know i, I already did yeah and i've i, mm. I was i was always going to wait i was always going to wait to see what happened with it especially after some films i've been other films I've been really looking forward to having their own problems. You know, mm. you get burned once and it, and it's like, no, now I'm not, now I'm going to wait yeah. before, before you would have had my money, but now I'm going to wait. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm. Oh, well, oh, oh, well, oh, well. Indeed. oh, well, <laughs> well, well, at least they, uh, they also released Sonic two, which looks good. Sonic two well. is great. I, I, I say it's say great. so. I say it's great. I mean, it is a passable kids movie. It is, yeah. It was. It was <laughs> I am a lot more entertaining than luck, but yes, I, it was. It's, I ended up going oh. to see it at the cinema when it came out, and because um, I'd reviewed the first one, and I think my my general review of the first one was it's better than I expected it to be, <laughs> and the second one is like yeah. it's as good as the first one, maybe a yeah. little bit better. Yeah. So <laughs> meh. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, so slightly better than that. More like <laughs> as, video, as video game as video game adaptations go. I think they've done all right with with they, Sonic. You know, better than Doom. I, I just <laughs> they, they've done all right with it. It's, I just I feel myself falling down like a, a rabbit hole of the internet. That I don't want to. I don't want to be in. But they they understood the law of sonic in, in the, in the <laughs> oh my <laughs> only God. you would say that this this is how i'm spending my monday nights be ashamed Dear god <laughs> um so i i got something out of it like as somebody who absolutely loved sonic the hedgehog as a kid absolutely loved the sonic games anyway uh, I think um, you'll find they got the angle of rotation on Tails's tail uh, absolutely spot on. <laughs> so uh, two thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Anyway, what were we talking about? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, what's coming up? What What are we excited for? I've got a got a list of movies here. I've already. Um... I think we've are. decided we're absolutely not excited for any 4K discs ever again. Well, ever. come on. I mean, we've got the immense Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, they're really going through his catalogue in an exquisite way. They've gone for recently, we've had Red Sonia, mm -hmm. which is an Arnie classic. Teal yeah, and now, now we have Raw Deal. Oh, God. <laughs> is this one where he bakes? Or, 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 or is it his wife that. who bakes? There's a baking scene in it which made me chuckle. Well, that's it, about it. It has a fantastic score. I, I mean, I can hum the score. I'm not going to because it's embarrassing, but it's, it has a tremendous score that just plays incessantly throughout the whole movie when he's walking, when he's shooting, when he's, you know, baking. with his mate rehabilitating, when he's driving a car. It's just drums and and like electric guitars and it's it's raw deal score and I, I remember it being a terrible movie an immense score and arnie so i had to watch it i've got some so, insider information on the next army release it's um hercules in new york <laughs> fantastic classic <laughs> can you imagine no, they're gonna do conan the destroyer next mm. um we got video drone from arrow uh, after all I said about like I'm not going to pre-order heat yeah, because I'm going to win, I immediately yeah. clicked on. The, you need, you need to get the one. one that reaches out of the TV and you know hands the disc to you. Yes, I'm. Mm. Oh, and, uh, there's an um for well, well on Videodrome well, and a well, nine for event. No, Horizon. no, no. Bear me out. I love Videodrome, but okay. I have not bought Arrow's Blu-ray because oh, yeah. fair, fair. I am rocking. The US Criterion version, simply because the packaging makes it look like a VHS tape. <laughs> In fact, how's this for live? Can I go and uh, uh, can I go and find it? I bet I can't find it now. Yep, you gotta reach into your TV, uh -huh. don't you? Oh, that would be good. Look at that. Yes. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, Arrow, get yourself stuffed. <laughs> 
I don't care if it's on 4K. Look at that. Just get the, I'll get the that, 4K that, PR it. disc, Mark. You can stick calm it in down. there. there we you go. can stick it in there. So Everyone's that's happy. Ex- that's exactly what what right. I want is a true release of Videodrome where you have to reach into James into your own gut, no, into your own gut. vagina in order to pull out the disc. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want. When I mean, are they going to do that? Uh, it's it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> no, big, big, big fan of Videodrome. Oh, but, but, but again, with it being Arrow, uh, arrow can be, cards. Well, they can be a bit hit and miss with adding extras, you know, to the on disc stuff. So, as you know, half of their Argento stuff are, dare I say, it, fairly lazy ports, but half have got a ton of new extras on. Uh, be... crossed, we get we get new stuff on I this mean, new release to make it worthwhile. I don't know whether I mind as much because I've been, I'm not as bothered about extras, I think, as you are, Mark. And I think I've realised the reason why is because in the transition from DVDs to like super DVDs. I re-bought a lot of my favorite titles um, when they came out with special edition DVDs Mm. because of the extras. And then they came out on Blu-ray with none of that shit, none of it. (laughs) Mm. Like It's like you would, you just all of a sudden they came out on Blu-ray with one cut, but you released two cuts on DVD. Why have you done one cut on Blu-ray and no extras? I wanted the the mm. commentary and the deleted scenes. So uh, the reason why I say that is that now we've come to 4K. Well, that's 4K there's now, a, isn't it? Yeah, there's zero a, a extras. Whole, well, there's a whole <laughs> yes, I I see that, but there's like a whole like history of extras that they've built up, and I'm just pleased when they take all of those and they stick those on a disc in the set that I'm buying, because I've experienced an entire format where they skipped out on existing extras. They didn't even have to make new ones for me. They just didn't give the old ones. So I'm quite happy with most of these releases as long as they bring over everything, which is often a lot. Well, I think I think there are three, there's meant to be three new uh, featurettes on the Videodrome 4K really? release. Um, which added to the substantial extras that are already on there. blue yeah. release. I, I think it it looks like a, a good package. And I I, I am interested. I, I would say that I'm probably more interested in extras of movies that are not great. I would much rather watch a documentary about a movie that is not very good. Troll than, 2. Yeah. <laughs> 100% I would watch that. No, <laughs> I mean, like. I know what you mean. Yes. You know, like yes, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I would watch the extras on that disc before I would watch the film again because yes. I am just fascinated about how this nonsense gets made. Um, same with mm-hmm. like Battle of the Five Armies. I will watch four hours of extras of on the Battle <laughs> of the Five Armies before I will watch the movie again because it's fascinating to see how a turkey is made, you know, in real time. That's what yeah, I want. But not, yeah, but not anymore. Tur- olden day turkeys, yes, because they genuinely thought they were amazing. And so, you know, the mania and the delusion is what's fun. But not not to go off on a huge tangent or anything, but the, the best thing about the Battle of the Five Armies um, making of <laughs> is that it just reveals uh, everybody is so brazen about not knowing what the heck is going on. There, there are vast... <laughs> vast parts of the film that are not even imagined until the very last minute to the extent where peter jackson goes a battle will go in this hour (laughs) this is brilliant this is what i want to know but i want to know why it turned out so horrendously bad this is it i mean so yeah yeah. little filmmaking insights are definitely it's it's like i i mentioned to you guys um that the scoob movie they met, they met, we're going to make a Scoob sequel. No one was interested in the first one. The no. first one was terrible. Even the kids weren't interested in it. They were going to make a sequel. They somehow, they cancelled the sequel, wise decision, but they somehow already commissioned and paid for a score for the sequel, which has been uh, produced. They produced a score to a movie they're never going to make before any other part of it. How do you do that? Does that, mean I can, does that mean I can get the Batgirl soundtrack on CD as well? This is, yeah, probably. No, no. Batgirl. I mean, it's but it's, a, it's Batgirl's com- coming. <laughs> it's both. It's both. They're both Warner Brothers, and they're going through some weird shit they at the are. moment. Cancel Boy, everything. Oh, Accountancy is amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love one of the recent posts, which is like, 
Batgirl tested at least as well as Black Adam. Like, I, uh, does, that, does that mean they're going to cancel Black Adam uh, as yeah, well? The, oh, the first, thing, first thing I'm thinking is uh, that's why they cancelled it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, anyway, the, yeah, yeah. They we, were also saying though that the plot of just to talk about Batgirl for a second, <laughs> the the plot of Batgirl relied quite heavily on Flashpoint, yes. which is not happening yet. And we'll see what happens to Ezra Miller, <laughs> maybe yeah. ever. Yeah. You know? I, how are they gonna fix these things? They can't. I they I I they, think they, they're gonna go back in time, they're gonna get Ezra Miller to run really fast. And basically turn the world back in time to not cast him. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, yes. yeah. They're they're either going to thoroughly butcher the Flash movie, or that they're, they're going to have to completely rethink their strip because all of their future projects were based around this idea that they were going to bring that. Yeah. all DC hi- movie history together. Yeah. Which is why what Michael Keaton was in the Batgirl yeah, movie yeah. Mm-hmm. and. Yeah. Yes. I, and that's just yeah. their plan for that now. If things continue the way they're going, it's pretty screwed out the window. Yeah. They can't do it. No. I'll tell you though, Justice League 2, Snyder's Justice League Boot 2, it's looking pretty sweet now. With a thousand percent hindsight, that would have been 10 times better than all this nonsense. Let's not turn into a Snyder apologist yes. channel. Yes. No, I'm just, just say, I'm just saying, guys. <laughs> Just saying, where I mean, have we it, ended up? I mean, let's be honest, it's no prey. <laughs> True. Um, we've got Marathon Man also and uh, Robert De Niro, Ed Norton and Marlon Brando in uh, the score mm-hmm. coming from Keenan. Should have been Ace was very average. Mm. It was, it was. I mean, I, I, like, I like them all. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's still good. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, mm. Planes, Trains and Automobiles. Great movie. Yes, I, I, I'll, movie. I'll, I'll make do with my iTunes version. Thank you very much. It's not a 4K disc screamer, that one for me. I, I've got it on DVD and I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pick that up, stick it next to my Home Alone 4K. And, <laughs> and uh, Infernal Affairs trilogy. I'm going to briefly rant about this. It's been announced. Coming First out one's brilliant. Well. Great. The second one's quite good. I really like the second one. I, 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 there was a time when I thought it was the Godfather two of that series. Well, that was a time but you were wrong then. I, I had a lot of time for the second one. They did really well, really well with it. But, but the first one is phenomenal, mm-hmm. classic. Uh, but the third one is the Godfather three. Yeah, it, so, it's so, very. I don't know. Very but, take it or leave it. Yeah. Um, but aside from all of that, infinitely better than the Departed. Yes. Uh, fantastic performances. Uh, really well structured, really, yeah, really enjoyable set. It'll be only coming to France. I've got a problem with France. I've got a problem. I've got a problem. Ste- with ste- ste- steady there, right now. Steady there. I do. No, I'm telling you right now. I do not get why French releases don't have English subtitles on because, because they hate us. Yeah, because they hate English people. No, look, <laughs> with good reason. <laughs> it's not a. It's not a French movie. There are like a billion subtitle tracks you could have on there. It would cost nothing. It would be no. The amount of French discs I have bought to watch like Doberman, Brotherhood of the Wolf, I bought this gorgeous Le Pac de Loup. It might be license restrictions, Cal. What? Not enabling them to put an English subtitle yes. track it's i don't yes i don't buy don't it i'm not has, having it i'm not brexit having it. means brexit okay no, it's, been, <laughs> it's been like this for like 30 years yes. i bought i've bought so many movies from france i'll pay them my money just please please put subtitles i do not know if this infernal uh, infernal affairs trilogy set in france will have an english subtitle track but I'm scared because it's in France. You're scared. Yeah, I would never, ever, ever pre-order something without reading like five reviews that all confirmed an English subtitle. Well, just wait then. There you go. Jobs are good. I want to wait. It's in (laughs) front of the pairs on 4K. Anyway, hopefully someone will uh, pick it up. But that's that's my rant over. I I actually love France, but put some subtitles on, please. It's not. Why don't you just learn French? I do. I know French, but I don't want to. I don't want to see things. Learn whatever the the original language was of infernal affairs. This is just 
nonsensical. I'm not having it. It's not. Go and watch the Comanche dub. <laughs> um, so tell us about Under the Banner of Heaven. Come. Oh, super briefly then, because we're we're low on time. But um, on Disney Plus, I think it's a, an FX series, um, Under the Banner of Heaven. It is a dramatization of a real life case of murder within the Mormon community in Utah in the 1980s. Um, and it is absolutely gripping. Like every, there is not a single poor performance in this show. Uh, and that is definitely what, what sells it for me. So um, Andrew Garfield is the, the lead investigator, also um, part of the Mormon community investigating a murder within this community where everything is so close-knit and everyone calls each each other brother and sister and such a small town but within this community is like festering uh fundamentalist ideals so um the the fundamentalist latter-day saints are still famous now for being very i don't want to get any in any hot water <laughs> lots of people say it is very culty and um kind of scary and um it it's the side of mormonism that is still very pro polygamy anti state um and the show looks at that history of the founding of mormonism through to modern day mormonism through to the regression back to fundamentalism within the sphere of a murder mystery and it is just so well executed for the most part that um i just i i can't recommend it highly enough it, it, it the like i said the performances in it make it and um i think it's an eight part series it's all up on disney plus now i've got a lot of time for garfield absolutely yeah, got a lot of time for in recent years he is 100 percent proved himself yeah. as somebody who is versatile and believable and interesting and, you just uh, have to look at like tick tick boom and under the silver lake um <laughs> God, you just have to look at the last spider-man movie yeah, he was. It's, it's he, great. he thoroughly redeemed his previous yeah, Spider-Man yeah, it's great. That was right. a miracle. Brought, um, literally brought a tear to my eye. That that was. Yeah, um, well, he's he's brilliant in it. But everyone is great. Wyatt Russell is in it. Kurt Russell's son and um, Rory Culkin. You know, a, a member of the Culkin acting family. <laughs> he's great in it as well. Looking instantly recognisable as a Culkin. Um, uh, no, you're missing the MVP, Tom. Yeah. Uh, so, for those of you that watch the park, you'll know I famously don't watch any TV because TV sucks. But off the back of Tom's excellently written review, I I dove in on this and I agree with everything Tom said. I, I it's seven episodes and I'm I'm just starting the mm. sixth episode, so I'm not quite mm. there yet. But for me, the MVP of all of this, bizarrely, is Sam Worthington. Unbelievable. I am. Um... He is awesome in this. Absolutely, uh, I was I was watching it at home, and I had to sort of nudge my partner. And go, That's the guy from Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Sl slightly he's less great. blue, but no, he he's he's absolutely immense in it. Uh, he's great, and, and so no, I agree with you entirely. It's it's been gripping. It's it's not, it's not an easy watch. It's a tricky no, it's watch. Grim. There's it's there's. Grim flashbacks within flashbacks and sometimes they just occur out of nowhere but, but mm. they're there for a reason because they're you know representative of, of what's instantly flish you know flashing into uh people's minds so they are there but it does mean that it can jump all over the shop a little yeah bit. the uh, the it it understands how to use mm. flashbacks in that it is parallel storytelling yes and everything that happens is relevant but it is not always timed particularly well mm. or um, which can, yeah, it makes it feel choppy. Some episodes are better than others, but in general, um, they, they've kind of got the fundamentals, but not the execution on the on the mm. multiple times. It sounds, it it's, sounds tremendous. It's, very, it's, it's great. It's excellent TV. I'm going to, I'm going to, once I'm done watching things like Father of the Bride, I'm going to <laughs> definitely carve out some time for this. Priorities. But you've also watched like seven hours of, 
Sandman. Ten which, episodes. Which is like uh, something that people must have been looking forward to. I have never read the comic. Not me neither. I, um, I, 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 I'm a... <laughs> As a, as a person growing up, I was a huge fan of Neil Gaiman. I think as I hit my sort of mid to late 20s, I started to recognize his, um, his plot beats and the direction that he likes to take stories in and his style of dialogue. And sort of once you key into the way that he writes, I, I don't want well, to say I fell out of love with his writing, but I... I you know, once you get something, it's demystified. It it takes something kind of away from it. So I was sort of half looking forward to Sandman, looking forward to it with a bit of trepidation. But actually, um, for all the dramatic license that's been taken with this adaptation of the comics for Netflix, it definitely feels like the spirit of the comics is there and the spirit of Neil Gaiman's writing is there. And that's kind of mostly for better, a little bit for worse. Um, I think if you look at any of Neil Gaiman's adaptations to the big or small screen, the thing that sticks out most is his brand of kind of offbeat dialogue does not really translate into the mouths of actors. It, it is fun to read on the page, but when you make people say it out loud, it sounds a bit weird. Um, and that was true with American Gods. It was true with Stardust. It was true with uh, Neverwhere back in the 90s. <laughs> like yeah, American Gods went off the rails. Yeah. Maybe um, Never was, was on the rails in the first place. I oh, I don't know. I quite liked the first season. I, anyway. did, I did, but it had to. Anyway, yes. Yeah. Anyway, indeed. <laughs> yes. I'm very um, much looking forward to this. It is this good. Is... It is a good genre show. Mm. The, the really weird thing about it is that if you are familiar with the comics, you will instantly recognize it as being the stories from the first and second volumes of comics. Um, and if you don't, if you have never read one of these comics in your life, which is going to be most of the audience, it's going to make the season look a bit odd because it sticks really interestingly to that structure completely rigidly in in the respect that it's almost like two mini seasons of a show you have a five episode storyline a interval of one episode which is um fun character study and then you have a four episode storyline and it's there is only one through line which is this guy behind me the corinthian who is a nightmare created by the main character dream who is the uh, lord morpheus the god of dreams and he created a nightmare the nightmare has gone out into the world um, and is out of control and that is the only through line for the 10 episodes they are almost standalone i got man to go on a very quick digression <laughs> i absolutely hate it when people say oh you know serialized tv these days it's like a long movie like screw that people should learn how to write television in an episodic way that is enjoyable to watch for one episode at a time um sandman is absolutely not that it is like two three-hour movies with kind of like two short half-hour interludes stitched together in the middle and taken as two slightly overstuffed, overlong, three-hour movies, I think it's hugely enjoyable. I, I think it, it holds together really, really well. The, the stories have different casts, they have different ideas, um, and they are just, like, it's just dark fantasy done really well. The design work is great. The, the scripting on the whole is really great. Um, the performance is David Thewlis is in the first story and he is absolutely brilliant as he always is. Um, the mem the cast members of the second story struggle a bit more to begin with, but definitely hit their stride by the end of the season. And 
it, it's just a really sharp, like ten part dose like of a, like, like an easy six out of ten. Is it? You know what? <laughs> it's it's more. It's more. I know. I'm reading an eight from you. It I, I think phenomenal. it might be. I've just got to remind everybody. This is on Netflix. Yeah. How did how did this happen? I mean, yeah. I'm staring down the, the barrel of Jamie Foxx in Night Shift on Friday. I know. And, and, it's and like, I'm thinking, is it going to be a five or a six? I'm not you, really, you know, it, might, it will, probably won't be a four, but it'll be really lucky to be a and you, seven. And you're you telling that, me that, that Sandman uh, is good and faithful <laughs> and accurate and it'll please fans and that's people it. will be, I mean, that's just well, nonsense. Now, you're lying. Let's let's not go too far. There are some fans that it definitely won't please. There is some gender swapping and some racial diversifying amongst the characters. That is going to not please the people on the prey thread. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I, I, it, it feels true to the spirit of of Neil Gaiman's writing, and and that feels good. And because it's two separate stories. Yeah. It never suffers from the stupid Netflix lag of you have to watch five episodes before anything happens. They yeah. know they've got four hours to tell one this one story and another four hours to tell this other story. So things mostly keep moving. And that is or, to its benefit. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, Sounds I'm awesome. It. it does. Sounds what thrilled. TV I'm going to watch. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's not perfect. Like character development leaves a lot to be desired. In fact, it makes absolutely no sense in some situations. Yeah, after this podcast, you're gonna go away and write the review and go, yeah, I didn't I didn't like it. It was a fault. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was all right, really. Um <laughs> no, it and, sounds it sounds really good. Yes, I'm sold. I am, good. I am sold too. Review um, incoming, hopefully yeah. tomorrow. Can I can I sell you guys on Michelle Moynihan battling Jason Clark? in a sky movie with the help of jay courtney no okay uh can i sell you on jamie fox doing a vampire comedy action out on netflix no 100 no okay hang uh, on jay, jay courtney and uh jason clark is it a terminator genitals sequel <laughs> no, it can easily be oh. not talk about that yeah um, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a low bar for, for this netflix gone to limbo under yeah it? i think i think they'll make it uh and we got nope mark's who gets nope. who gets to re re review nope mark's I, doing I, nope. i'm mark's, going for nope mark's god doing damn nope. you mark yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry what can i say already by the way months ago i said i bet it's about this Recently revealed, it definitely is about what I said it was yeah. about. Yeah, I'm a winner, is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, I look forward for Jordan Peele disappointing me for a third straight time. So, no! so, oh, uh... Kaz, why have you given this to me? <laughs> 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 oh my god, this is another Paul Anderson situation. I think <laughs> best Paul Anderson movie. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, 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 I think you by any director with the words Paul and Anderson in his it, name. It, it's the best Paul Anderson movie that doesn't have a huge prosthetic penis in it. Uh, there to drink your milkshake i just think <laughs> it up <laughs> seek yeah. help i did i did <laughs> you brought milkshake <laughs> right we'll do a competition and it's to win the joint best paul ws anderson resident evil directed sequel thingy final chapter it really isn't it's like the worst of all of them but anyway yeah. uh to win a copy of paul ws anderson's the second best Paul Anderson, by the way, uh, Resident Evil, the final chapter on 4K. You just have to use the following question to select the correct answer from the competition page. And I will remind people who've already done this and just guessed it, I have the power to go in and change your answer to incorrect. So just, just it's just a waste of time. You, you should find out the question first. And then get um, it wrong. <laughs> yeah, and then get it wrong. Right. Since we all agree Event Horizon is Paul W.S. Anderson's best film, the question is, what is Paul W.S. Anderson's best film? So there, there you go. Go and pick Event Horizon from the options. Uh, that's it for the AV Forums podcast this week. My thanks to both hardware and movies teams. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. 
Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when we publish our live streams, product reviews, and more. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook and bookmark abforums.com for the latest reviews, news, and videos. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating on whichever service you use, if they allow it, but only if you enjoyed the show. I'm Cass Harlow. Thank you for watching and listening, and join us for the next podcast on the 22nd of August. <laughs>